The traditional network was designed for applications that lived in the data center, and so was WANOP. Uh, WANOP was designed to optimize every application um, coming from any branch office, in this case we see Asia, the US, and Europe, back to apps that lived in the data center. And WANOP has two main things it does. It accelerates applications to overcome latency, and it deduplicates to give you more virtual bandwidth on the network. In this case here, we can see we have 150 milliseconds latency out to Europe, and maybe only 10 megabits per second of bandwidth shared amongst many users in the branch. And so their application performance is really bad compared to maybe users that are in the US or very really local to the application. There's been two major changes to the enterprise WAN and where applications live. And the first big major change is that applications are migrating out to the cloud. And so if we look at our apps that we have in our data center here, we have your standard suite of apps. We have email, maybe that's Office 365 now, CRM is maybe Salesforce, maybe messaging is Slack. And what's happening is these groups of apps are migrating out. They are going out to software as a service providers and infrastructure as a service providers. And we'll just put them up here. And so immediately we see that there's an issue. If I've bought WAN up for my entire network, well, now I'm optimizing applications that maybe aren't even there anymore. And so the value of trying to optimize the entire circuit and optimize every application changes tremendously here. Um, and so what we want to do with SD-WAN is we want to look at optimizing just the applications that need it. Now, there's been another big change uh, on the enterprise WAN in that MPLS is no longer the only form of connectivity. I also can use internet. And so if we look at adding broadband internet here, and we place a appliance at each branch, and also in the data center, we now have entirely new means of connectivity for my enterprise WAN and applications. Now, the latency between my sites is not going to change. In fact, it could even be worse using the internet. But what does change is that I have a lot more bandwidth. And so here I have maybe 100 megabits per second at each site now. And I also have my 10 meg MPLS link that is there. And I have a lot more bandwidth to work with. And so all of a sudden, one of the main features of WAN optimization, which is deduplication, it maybe isn't quite as important as it used to be. I have 10 times the bandwidth that I used to have if I have internet as part of my WAN equation, and so I don't necessarily need to try to deduplicate all my traffic to get more bandwidth. Now, what's really interesting is take both these WAN links, and we actually can bond them together, and we can build business intent policies to choose how traffic routes to make sure it routes across the best link all the time, to put specific apps on specific links, and we can even do things like fixing for packet loss or out-of-order packets to maintain a really high-quality WAN experience regardless of the transport. But this also means that my applications in the data center, they actually need to be optimized differently as well. And so if we look at, we have these apps here. These ones left. I still have ERP backup, VoIP video, and VDI in my data center. Voice over IP and video, I don't want to make them faster. Uh, if I tried to make VoIP faster, um, nothing would sound, sound right. If I tried to make video faster, it'd have the same problem. Everything would go really fast, and it really it wouldn't make any sense. However, ERP backup and VDI they are applications that are still really important to my users and my remote branches. Um, they have two forms of connect connectivity now to get back, but latency is still an issue. I still need to accelerate the connections for these applications. Well, with traditional WANOP, I would buy WANOP for everything. With SD-WAN, I can license it just for the app. And so now in this case, I have these apps that are living in my data center. In my business intent overlays, literally with just a checkbox, I can enable WAN optimization for the apps that need it. And this totally changes the consumption model and makes WANOP much more accessible to any customer. What's also interesting is I have apps that are moving out to the cloud, software as a service, IAS. These apps left. They're not in the data center anymore. Doesn't mean they don't always need WANOP. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. We can spin up in, in this case, maybe Microsoft Azure or Amazon. And so let's go ahead and spin up Amazon here into AWS. 
And I actually can still optimize my user traffic directly to the software as a service, infrastructure as a services, into the same data center on a really low latency interconnect that's really, really fast, maybe a millisecond and 100 gigabits per second. Um, and I can provide WAN optimization and also encryption for applications that live in the data center. And so now, whether my apps live in the data center or if they live out in the cloud, I'm able to actually optimize end-to-end -end and include encrypt across my entire network.